This video contains the solutions to take-home problems number 17. For the first question, we want the x and y intercept of this polynomial function, and we want to write our answers as points. So the x-intercepts are going to be the points where y equals 0. And remember that f of x is just another way to write y. So this is telling us we want to solve the equation 0 equals 4 times x minus 3 squared plus x plus 2 cubed times x plus 5. And we know that when we have a factored expression set equal to 0, one of the factors has to equal 0. Now when we have these uh, repeated expressions, so when we have x minus 3 squared, remember that that just means x minus 3 times x minus 3. And x plus 2 cubed just means x plus 2 times x plus 2 times x plus 2, and then we have x plus 5. So one of these factors has to equal 0. Well, 4 can't be 0, so that doesn't give us any solutions x minus 3 would tell us that x equals 3, and this factor of x minus 3 would also tell us that x equals 3. We don't need to write it again, we just have x equals 3 as one of our solutions. So as we can see, these repeated factors don't give us any additional solutions. Once the factor appears once, we get a solution and we don't have to write it anymore. And then x plus 5 as a factor gives us x equals negative 5. So that means we have three solutions to this equation, which means we have three x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are going to be 3 comma 0, negative 2 comma 0, and negative 5 comma 0. Those are our x-intercepts. The y-intercept is the point where x equals 0. So y would equal 4 times 0 minus 3 squared times 0 plus 2 cubed times 0 plus 5. So that's negative 3 squared times 2 cubed times 5. And when we multiply all that out, we get 1,440. So we only have one y-intercept, and the y-intercept is 0, 1,440. All right, similar question. We're given a factored polynomial equation here, and we want to find the x and y-intercepts. So again, we'll start with the x-intercepts. That's where y equals 0. So that's going to give us 0 equals negative 2 times x cubed times x plus 7 times x minus 8 to the fourth power. And again, by our property of 0, we know that one of those factors has to be 0. Well, negative 2 can't be 0. x cubed, that's just x as a factor repeated three times. So that gives us one solution, x equals 0. x plus 7 as a factor would tell us that x plus 7 could be 0, which would mean x equals negative 7. And then x minus 8 as a factor would give us a solution, x equals 8. And again, the fact that the factor x minus 8 is repeated four times doesn't give us any additional solutions. It just means that x equals 8 is a solution. So that means that we have three x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are 0, 0, negative 7, 0, and 8, 0. Now for the y-intercepts, we're going to plug 0 in for x. So we're going to get y equals, or g of x equals, negative 2 times 0 cubed times 0 plus 7 times 0 minus 8 to the fourth. And what we notice when we plug this in is that we're multiplying by 0, which means we're just going to get 0. So that means that we have one y-intercept, namely 0, 0. Note that the point 0, 0 is an x-intercept and a y-intercept, because that point lies on both the x-axis and the y-axis. But we do list it twice here, because we want to list it under our x-intercepts, and we also want to list it as our y-intercept. Now for this question, we want to find the roots of this function, and the multiplicity of each root, and then talk about whether the graph of the function crosses or touches the x-axis at each root. So to find the roots, what we're really doing is we're setting this equation equal to 0. And the good news for us is that this is factored, which means any of the solutions that we would get to this equation would give us a root. So just like before, 4 can't be 0, but x minus 3 could be 0, and this gives us a solution x equals 3. x plus 2 as a factor gives us a solution x equals negative 2, and x plus 5 as a factor gives us a solution x equals negative 5. Now, what's the multiplicity mean? Well, the multiplicity just means the number of times that that factor is repeated in this factored expression. So x minus 3 is repeated two times, which means the multiplicity 
is 2. x plus 2 is repeated three times, which means the multiplicity is 3. And then x plus 5 only appears once. We could think of this as x plus 5 to the first power. And so the multiplicity would be 1. Now, what we can do now that we know the multiplicity is we can look at whether the multiplicity is even or odd. If the multiplicity is even, since 2 is an even number, that means that the graph is going to touch the x-axis at this root. This x equals 3 gives us an x-intercept, and the question is, does the graph cross through the x-axis at that point, or does it just touch and turn back around? Since the multiplicity is even, this tells us that it touches. When the multiplicity is 3, that means the graph crosses the x-axis, because 3 is an odd number. Even multiplicity it touches, odd multiplicity it crosses. And then multiplicity 1, 1 is also an odd number, which means the graph crosses at that point. So this would be our solution. We've got each root, we've got the multiplicity, and we've got the touching versus crossing. Same type of question here. Again, we want to find the roots, the multiplicities, and then figure out whether the graph is touching or crossing at this point. So we set the function equal to 0 and solve. Negative 2 is a factor, but negative 2 can't be 0, so that doesn't give us any roots. x cubed is a factor, which gives us a, a root x equals 0. x plus 7 is a factor, which gives us a root x equals negative 7. And x minus 8 is a factor, which gives us a root x equals 8. The multiplicity of the root 0 is 3. The multiplicity of the root negative 7 is 1, because that factor only appears once. And the multiplicity of the root 8 is 4, because that factor appears 4 times. Since 3 is an odd number, this root crosses, uh, the, what I should say is the graph crosses the x-axis at that root. Since 1 is an odd number, the graph also crosses the x-axis at this root. And since 4 is an even number, the graph touches the x-axis at this root. And again, this is our solution. One more example here, again, similar type of idea. So again, we've got a factored polynomial, and we want to know the multiplicity of each root and analyze this as before. So here we have a factor of 3x minus 1. So it might not be immediately obvious what root that gives us. So we can always set up the equation 3x minus 1 equals 0, add 1 to both sides, divide both sides by 3, that gives us a root x equals 1 third. Here we've got a factor x squared plus 9, and if we try to set x squared plus 9 equal to 0, we get x squared equals negative 9, and this has no solution. So even though we have x squared plus 9 as a factor here, it doesn't contribute any roots to our polynomial, which is something that will happen every once in a while, so just keep an eye out for something like that x plus 3 squared, on the other hand, that does give us a root, just like in the other problems that we've done, that's going to give us the root x equals negative 3. Since this factor appears two times, the multiplicity is 2. Since the factor x plus 3 also appears two times, the multiplicity is 2. 2 is an even number, so my graph touches the x-axis at that point. And 2 is an even number, so my graph touches the x-axis again at that point. And again, here in the middle, we didn't get any roots, so we can ignore that factor.